Well, welcome to Tea Time. That's right, Miss Liz is back. It is a new week, and we have two new Tea Times uh, coming to you today, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Center Time. If you guys haven't gone over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel, please go over there, subscribe to the channel, ring that little doorbell, and you can watch these Tea Times at any time in your home, in your in your office. In, while you're driving, you can listen to these Tea Times at your own pace. So today we have two friends in the house. So we have Paul and we have Larry in the house. And we're going to talk about Memorygram. So a little bit on Memorygram. I'm going to give you a little info on that. But before we get started, we're going to do the disclaimer and we're going to get started. And we have two incredible men sitting in the background. So we'll get them into the studio as soon as possible. Disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live Show. Miss Liz myself is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and, and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussions forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show a later date and time and again all tea time shows are done on thursdays 3 p.m and 7 p.m eastern center time if you see a tea time on a monday or tuesday it's a rescheduled tea time or it's a surprise tea time to miss liz finds because i'm always digging for some new content to come to the table so now a little bit on larry and paul in the heat of memory gram lies a tale of two childhood friends paul and larry would a shared dream as they grew up grew older they watched loved ones pass around them and saw memories that lost forever amazing stories family traditions life lessons and even cooking recipes spurred by a passion to keep these memories alive we embarked on a mission to create a space where stories weren't just told but preserved through memory gram was born memory gram mission is simple record and preserve precious memories at memory gram they understand the bond of families and the stories that knit them together. Whether it's the laughter echoing from a long past family vacation, the pride in the grandparents' tale of time cannot comprehend, or the simple joy of everyday moments. They are committed to ensuring that these stories endured. With, uh, with us, your family history isn't just remembered, it's an emotorized I think I said that wrong, ready to be passed on for generations. So let me get Paul and Larry in here and they can tell us a little bit more on Memorygram. But before we get into Memorygram, we're going to get to know Larry and Paul a little bit. So let me pop in Larry and Paul. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hello. It is nice to have you guys here. So I'm going to start with Paul. Paul, who were you as a little guy and who are you now as a grown guy? Um, as a little guy, I was a little bit of a troublemaker, mm, much like my son is now, um, clever, but good hearted. And now I think I'm quite the same, maybe a little bit more mature, a little bit more responsible and, uh, caring more about my neighbors and 
the people around me and my loved ones and family and friends. And so I haven't actually changed all that much. I've just uh, emerged. I've matured, I guess you could say, evolved, if you will. So, Larry, same question. Who were you as a little guy and who are you now? Who was I as a little guy? I was a, a curious young fellow, um, not as much as a troublemaker as Paul, but uh, I spent a fair share of time with him. Uh, Paul and I actually grew up um, blocks away from each other. We were in Cub Scouts together and Boy Scouts. Um, and we've kind of we went through our educational journey together through college. Um, and now who I am as a grown man, I'm a man with a child, uh, still very curious. Um, just my curiosity is shifted a little bit from just everyday things more so to business and uh, the e-commerce space and uh, continuing that curiosity and energy uh, as long as I can. So you guys grew up as childhood friends, correct? Yes. So yeah. growing up, have you guys made some memories that you have put together in your platform? Uh, yeah, we've definitely made a lot of memories together. Um, like Larry said, we grew up quite close to each other physically and I guess spiritually in some sense as well. Um, I was friends with he and his brother and uh, we did Cub Scouts together. Uh, we were at each other's homes very often. Um, we also went to university together. So we were in the same school as each other from, our, I guess, the first school we went to, our elementary school, all the way through university. And so, yeah, a lot of shared memories, I would say, throughout our time. So we have a question here for you guys. How did Memory Gram start and when did it start? Oh, you want to take uh, that one there? Yeah. So the background on it is uh, Paul approached me, I think, in the early part of 2000, 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, I was planning a wedding, probably my third wedding day due to COVID, um, and discussed an idea with me um, on a vision. So initially, we were going to launch with a product. We didn't want to raise money from investors. Uh, we were going to bootstrap it and be fully owned. So um, we wanted to go on a multi-phased approach to launch with a singular product, generate as much capital as we could from that product, and then continue on with the greater journey. And part two of our greater vision slash journey would be the medallions that we'll discuss today. So everything kind of boiled up in 2021 um, with my background in digital marketing and e-commerce and Paul's background in app application development. Uh, it was a good partnership and... Uh, you know, it's been two and a half years, but it feels like a lot longer, to be honest. Well, the the years sometimes they seem long, right? And then when you look back, it's, it seems so short. It's amazing how time varies for different things, right? Yeah. And and memories is one of them. Uh, and holding on to those precious memories is so, so. Paul, what 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 vision did you have for Memory Gram when uh, Larry came to you about this? Oh, well, it's interesting. See, I, I lost my sister when I was 20. And so I'm 40 now. Um, and something I had noticed is that she died sort of just before, not, not long before everybody started having cameras in their hands. And how it is, it's very difficult sometimes to have the memories of people who have passed on particularly if they passed on before um, before everybody had a cell phone in their hand, everybody had videos, everybody had cameras. And then I was thinking about the fact that a lot of people still to this day don't take many pictures, don't take many videos. They have their stories. They have their stories to tell, but they don't necessarily get told. So how do we make it easier for people to tell these stories? Um, if you have a lot of money... You can hire a ghostwriter to write a memoir for you or something like this. But a lot of people who have very great stories um, can't do this. So we thought maybe we can solve this with software. And so mm -hmm. this is uh, how the idea began, I guess you would yeah. say. And just to piggyback off Paul's comment, when it comes to a ghostwriter and you're telling your own story, you want to tell it like you're telling a movie. You may embellish. Um, you may stay focused on one specific theme of the entire book, but our software evokes questions that are curiosity, questions, responses that are not something you would typically think about in the course of writing your own autobiography. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. All that, like your favorite uh, music festival that you went to, your favorite moment that you had there. 
Um, when you're writing your own autobiography, you're telling life lessons, you're telling other things, but you're not focus, focusing on singular events that were impactful on your life. Mm -hmm. right. So guys, this is a software program, correct? Yeah, it's a software program that results in a physical book. I mean, that's the that's how it started. If you're asking how Memorygram started, that was our first product was the software that allows people to, that facilitates people to write their story, which then gets put into a physical book of their stories and their photos uh, along with it. So, Larry, how long does it take to process the book? You know, it's an interesting question because we've had someone write their entire book in a month. Um, typically, okay. the time to write a book is seven to nine months. But I will say we do have a lot of customers who are unfortunately finding out that they have a terminal illness. Um, they don't have much time left. They need to write everything down um, as quickly as they can so they can pass those stories on to three generations down and further. So if you're just going in and you just want to write a book, say that you were gifted for Christmas, chances are you're going to finish your book. Um, I would say probably in like October, send it to print, and then you'll have it under the tree by the next Christmas. Right. Oh, wow. No. Yeah. Yeah, it, it varies. It varies a lot. We have uh, some authors who they've already written their story and they're just ready to go. And others who really take a long time, sometimes they need more than a year. And we're we're happy to facilitate that in cases where someone needs more time. We are really happy to we want to help people write their stories. We anytime someone is not able to continue to finish writing their story, we we view it as um, like almost like a failure on our part to uh, make this to facilitate it for them. So we really work hard um, both in how we think about the product, how we build the product, but also how we handle things like customer support and uh, customer outreach. I think it's very important to us that people are feeling supported by us in writing their stories. Is, yeah. So what is the size of the book? Is it like a couple hundred pages? How, 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 how's the format of the book? We allow up to 500 pages, uh, oh. but um, and and beyond that, if someone wants to write more, we can print it in additional volumes. Uh, but yes, the, it's usually minimum 50 pages or so. So you have done the additional copies, the, the volumes situation. The volumes. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. We've had we have printed multi-volume uh, books for people who. I mean, we had uh, one customer recently who had 1,200 pages in her story, and we uh, obviously printed that in multiple volumes uh, for her. So that's very, she was very excited, had a lot to say. So how does the book start? Does it start from childhood to, uh, to adulthood? Like, how, how's the layout for the book? It's actually a good question because our, our questions are submitted you can, you can do one of two things. You can pick all your questions, or if you don't do anything, we will send you um, just random questions. And those questions are pretty broad to everyone. Um, you know, not everyone went to college, not everyone got married. So we kind of exclude those questions um, on the broader sense. But um, we also invite people to write their own questions, such as tell me about the 1999 family reunion and what happened. And in that case, you're writing specific stories about your life. And uh, so it, it can get pretty granular on that end. Mm -hmm. And we also allow, we, we, we don't want to necessarily force people into starting at the chronological beginning. Uh, so the way we set it up is they have the ability to move around where different chapters are in the book. And the reason we do that is if you think about a lot of the uh, memoirs that get put out of, that get put out of like famous people, for example, let's take like Bob Iger from Disney. The first chapter in Bob Iger's uh, memoir is not when Bob Iger was born. It was a critical and pinnacle moment in his career as the CEO of Disney. It was when he opened uh, Shanghai Disneyland because this was like sort of the moment. Obviously, it wasn't the beginning of his life, but it was a moment that sort of everything led up to. Like, like he viewed this as the absolute pinnacle of his purpose in the world. Same with Arnold Schwarzenegger's. Arnold Schwarzenegger's... Uh, memoir same deal so i think in a lot of cases we assume that people's memoirs will start at i was born i grew up i was a child i became a man but that's not necessarily how people lay out their memoirs so we want to give people that flexibility in our software yeah and also when you go to print your book you have the ability to rearrange all your questions and answers 
like I was talking about earlier, if it takes you 10 months to write a book, you don't know where to start. And the, the main goal of this process is just to make it easy to write your life story. And if you want to take 10 months to do it and do it leisurely and not make it feel like homework, um, we just make it easy and then to rearrange and process and have the book read in your preferred way. So we have a question here for you, Larry and Paul. Do you guys, are you guys the editors of the books or do you have an editing team? So we have a team that actually proofreads the book and edits it to make sure that before print it is as, uh, as the users want and to make sure that it looks good before going to print. And we usually do that upon request. Um, one of the big missions of our company is just not to invade people's privacy. You enter your stories. You don't want us looking at it. Your book's ready for print. No problem. Like we, mm -hmm. we won't go ahead and proofread for you if you don't want to. So some books are the raw content. Yes. Yes. It's, it's up to, it's, it is the choice of the author. If they want us to take a very hands-off approach, we can do that. The software is good enough that it will formulate the book with the photos and everything in it. If they want us to have a very, and we've had very, very hands-on approaches where people submit a laundry list of requests of uh, different formatting and things. And we have been very happy to facilitate that to make sure that people are happy with the end result. So we have another question here. The layout for the cover of the book, do you guys select that or do, and does the client select that? So we have a number of uh, covers that our users can choose from. And that list is growing all the time right now. We are at eight different covers, but we're in the process of adding many, many more. And what it is, is they can uh, add their photo or not if they want. If they just want the cover design with no photo on the cover, they can have that. But if they want to add a photo to the cover of their loved one, of the author, of whatever they want. Some people add a photo of something that upon first viewing uh, is maybe like a flower and it's just like they're like prized flower or something like that all sorts of things so they add a they can add a photo to the cover and they're able to customize uh the words on the cover as well and on the spine as well so we have another question for the boy and for you guys have either of you done a book for a family member yes actually my mother has done one my uncle has done one um my wife's my wife's aunt did one so uh it's a situation where we really wanted to make sure it was good and worked because uh people who are very close to us in our lives are using it and writing their story on it and it would be super embarrassing if that didn't work out well so you know we kind of we don't we we, as, as Paul Graham would say, we dog fooded our own software. Um, <laughs> well, that's always nice to hear. Larry, has anybody in your family or have you done one for yourself? Yes, I have a family member working on it now and I'm trying to convince my mother-in-law too. The problem is she wants to write it in Vietnamese and I keep telling her it's totally fine. You can type your stories in Vietnamese. I will, I will show you the way. So we're working on her right now. Oh, that's cool. It's always nice when you have family supporting, right? And when they dip in it and they say, let me try this. Let me see how this works, right? Because it encourages others in the community to say, look at this family is supporting one another. Let's give it a try. Uh, so what has been the biggest uh, outcome from starting this platform? I think the biggest outcome is we looked at this as a business initially, but we didn't understand the impact that we would have on some people's lives. And mm -hmm. uh, Paul gets a little bit more emotional about it than I do. I don't want to call you out, Paul. Uh, okay. uh, but yeah, during the holidays when um, the books go to print and people are unwrapping them under the tree and sending Paul photos and our customer service team, I mean, it it feels like very good inside yeah. your it's very fulfilling. It's very, very fulfilling when you see these people crying when they get their books or tears of joy and tears of a lot of emotion, a lot of emotion in people when they get their book, when they get their mother's book, when they get their siblings books. Like it's really, um, I mean, I always, I always kind of, a, you know, I knew there'd be some emotion, but it was very, it's a very satisfying feeling as, you know, as founding this company and and doing the things that we do and providing this for people 
Well, and that was one of the main reasons that I reached out to you guys is because my grandma passed in November. And I was like, all of the memories when we got together for the service, it was like almost everybody forgot about her, you know, mm -hmm. and I, and then I, I just put the word memory in and you guys popped up and I was like, oh my goodness, grandma, like, thank you. Like you're bringing a message to me that I need to reach out to these guys and find out more. And when I need to find out more, I know my listeners want to find out more. So that's why they tune in to Tea Time. And they, they always like to see how Miss Liz brings different stories to the table. Yeah. And you guys gave me an interesting cup of tea because in this house, we don't sell and we don't serve a beverage. We serve words and storytelling. And that's exactly what you guys do is storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know, the importance of keeping stories alive. Uh, you guys gave me treasured, um, treasured experiences and Amplify. So I want to get I talked to both of you boys about you guys as individuals. Those three words, what do they mean to each and every one of you? I mean, I can start. Um, you know, a lot of times in life, I'm in in general, like who are you? Who are you as a person? The experiences that happen to you shape you as a person. So the way that I act right now is a direct result of my own memories and how I view certain things. So those are my experiences. Some of them are treasured, some not so much. But, you know, those who keep a good uh, conscious throughout life focus on the positive, not the negative. So we amplify the positive experiences that we've had that drive us to be the best person that we can. Yeah, I think I think for me, it's, it's similar. I, I just recently turned 40. And as I was thinking about what that meant, um, I realized, like, I have changed a lot uh, since I was, you know, over the years due to my experiences, like my, like maybe not the core of my personality, but a lot of how I sort of see things has changed as a result of my experiences. And, you know, as you're like going through life, it's, it's hard, it's not really possible to connect the dots going forward. But as you look back, it's a lot easier to connect the dots of, of how the things you went through led you to where you are today. And it makes me more appreciative of the experiences and the memories that I have. And, you know, sometimes it is very surprising how certain things impact us that in the moment maybe didn't feel like that big of a deal. Maybe didn't feel like this was a very special day. And you wake up one day and you're like, it's just a Tuesday. And then it may turn out to be one of the most important days of your life because of the things that happened in it. And... I think that's what we mean when we talk about the treasured experiences being amplified, having a greater appreciation and a greater awareness of the things that happen in our life that shape our story. And I, I strongly agree, you know, the stories that keep us alive, that change our lives. And that's why I always start off each time with how you guys were as a child and who you are as adults, right? Because we do grow, we do mature, we do like, we might have been that little rebel, like Paul, like you said, like when you were little, you know, and you grew up and you changed. Uh, Larry, you know, you said you were curious and now you're, you got the openness of, let's see if we can do this, like, you know, and you both said that you started this program as a business, but you finally seen that it was more of the impact that was really making the difference. And I think that's where a lot of businesses need to bring the heart in, right? Is seeing what impact you actually make and that. So I want to get into the medallions because you mentioned this at the beginning, Larry, the medallions. What is the medallions? Sure. So I actually have one here unprompted. Uh, this medallion is of the original Larry, my grandfather, who was probably one of the biggest inspirations in my life, also an entrepreneur. So the medallion itself is personalized with first name, last name, um, year of birth, and year of passing. It's a aluminum medallion that is very sturdy, weatherproof, and there's a unique QR code on there. So what this QR code does is we build, oh, Paul's got one in front of him as well. Um, what the QR code does is it links to what we call a virtual memorial. And you can think of that as like an obituary page that someone would have with a funeral home but just with a lot better uh, look and just much more prettier as Paul made it. So um, it contains a bio of the person, uh, photos, videos, and a tribute section where you can choose, you can have the profile restricted or public to have a visitor leave a message. So if I had this um, on my home next to the urn, when visitors came and they saw Larry 
was there, they'd scan it and leave a message about a great memory they had together. Uh, so it comes with a stand and it's meant for indoor and outdoor use. We find that I think uh, about half of the people in this country uh, this year who passed away are not going to be buried outside. So we wanted to build, make it nice enough to where you could put it inside, but also on a gravestone. So as yeah. it's weatherproof and metal, um, and we chose a specific type of aluminum that does not rust, we also send it out with this 3M adhesive, which if you apply it when it's dry, it'll stick all year round through the cold snow up north to the hot summer in Texas. So um, it's a very unique piece. Um, it's a loving tribute to a family member. And it's it's just a really unique way to share treasured memories after someone's gone away and just honor their legacy. And it is all made and engraved in America. So I don't know that that matters to people, but kind of matters to us. Uh, all of our products are made in the U.S., so it's very high-quality, super high-quality metal. So how did you come up with the idea of the heart? So we had seen a similar product online, but it, it, it was nothing personalized. I think they were just putting first name, last name on a, on a gravestone, and you just attach it with just a little scripture about the person. So just knowing our technical capabilities to build an app, the QR code seemed a little obvious um, to make it um, good in this digital space, the right product for this digital space. So we leveraged our app team that helped build the back end to the MemoryGram software. And I think that we are the only product on the market doing first name, last name, QR code with a virtual memorial. At yeah, least that I think, yeah, with the virtual memorial, we're the only ones using um, that personalize it currently. Yeah, so we launched that about... Three or four weeks ago, Paul can probably keep me more honest. Um, and we've seen great traction with it. Um, luckily, we have already had a customer base and a brand that we could build off of. But I mentioned at the beginning that there is a larger vision here. And sharing memories doesn't just stop now. It, it goes into the afterlife. And just because someone passes away does not mean that they're forgotten. Um, I recently lost someone close to me. That person's actions, that the, if, the experiences that we've had together have shaped the decisions that I make today. Um, so we shall not forget those people. Um, they're still with us, even though they're not here physically. So if you need a moment uh, with someone that you miss, you can scan the medallion and uh, just take a brief moment, walk down memory lane with them. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a, a really cool question here. Do you have to do the book and the medallion or can you do them separately? They're totally separate products. And it's okay. interesting because I feel like the, the idea of the book led to the idea of the medallion because with the book um i think we saw a few cases where um, like like larry was saying that they weren't able to finish because they died in the middle of writing their book and so we thought like gosh what is a way that we can like help these people like ease their suffering like with what we know and that's what led to the medallion of this idea that it's it's not too late you know with the book sometimes if they passed we would get to a point where oh it feels like it's too late well with this now it's not too late to still honor their memory so with the medallion can all family members have one or is it one one per family like how does that work you can print as many as we need as many as you want if you want if you want to have 10 of these 20 of these with uh, their name and their life and their QR on it. Uh, we can print as many as you need and we can print more later. If you turn out to want more, we have that ability. Same with the so. legacy book too. We do get a lot of people who finish, they place their order, they get their book. And then they, weeks or months later, they you know request additional copies uh, for future mm -hmm. generations. Yep. So we have a question here. What is the cost of the medallions and the books? So the medallion itself right now for the first medallion is $99, and that includes a virtual memorial page. Uh, that is a one-time cost. There are no recurring fees. Currently, there are no recurring fees with anything in memory gram, whether it be the legacy book or the medallion. And then each additional medallion is, is $50. So if you ordered three, it would be $99 plus $50 times two, so $199. Which is a decent price. Uh, and Larry, you mentioned something like, you know, we're, there's a lot of people that are not getting buried anymore. You know, they're doing releases, they're putting their ashes into glass blowing, uh, tree bulbs. There's so many different ways of releasing our loved ones, right? Yeah, my um, mother's probably going to criticize me for saying this, but she loves our pool in the backyard and she wants to get put through the pool filter. <laughs> 
her ashes. <laughs> So where do, where do we stick these medallions when somebody wants to have these uh, different lay, layways? Like, you know, anywhere you want. The yeah. art adhesive is super strong, super strong. And so people don't just put it on gravestones. People put it on all sorts of memorials. Uh, we have one where someone had had a, a little statue on a bench built for their child. And it, it adheres to that. And um, and it also comes with a stand. So when we ship it, we ship it with a super powerful adhesive, but also with a stand. So you can put it up on the stand if you want to put it maybe next to their urn or something on the mantle in the home. And also, it doesn't necessarily need to be at a memorial. Like, you can have it at your desk just as a reminder. So yeah. it looks great wherever. And um, just anywhere in the house and somewhere you can quickly scan and have a moment with your loved one. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's different, and it's it really a, another way of saying you're still with me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So uh, I noticed, Larry, your yours had your name on it. So what happens if somebody QR codes that name? Like, oh, that's my grandfather, the original Larry. Oh, so okay. yeah, he was the first medallion built, um, and yes, yeah, just a big inspiration in my life. So if that medallion is scanned, and actually, if you go to our website. And you click the medallions. You can actually click on. Um, you click, go to the memory grand medallion section. Click on the medallion. You can view a sample profile. And I think my grandma, grandpa's medallions featured on there. So if you scanned it with your phone, it would take you to his profile. Oh, well, that's really cool. Yeah. So, and what's the time frame for the medallions if you'd order them? So average production time is between one and three days. We'll ship domestically from Texas, oh. so it'll get to you in I don't know two to four days. And if there's a situation where we need to rush order, if there's a funeral or something like that where they want to feature it, um, we can facilitate facil facilitate that too. And we actually recently had a, a funeral in Hawaii where we got the medallion to them in time where someone, when they walked into the ceremony, they could scan the medallion and leave a nice message. Um, instead of passing around all those printed out um, stories of the life, they just scan the medallion and then they can kind of see everything on their phone and leave a message. Oh, that's really cool. I, I really like that. Uh, I want to get into, uh, you guys also have the the power of storytelling. Let's get into storytelling. What does it mean for you, for you guys? The power of storytelling. I mean, this is, I feel like this is how uh, humans forever convey information. Most effectively is through storytelling. And we think of our lives in a story. We naturally, our brains want to apply sort of a congruence to the universe. It wants to apply sort of rationality and an order and a meaning. And the way that this comes out is in, a, in the form of a story. So I think when I think of stories, I think of this is, this is how people learn. This is how people uh, memorialize. This is how people communicate. It's, it's very, I think it's very central to who we are as a species. And we all have stories, right? Yeah. Yes. And I think another big piece of that, what Paul was referring to is we have a lot of elders who are in nursing homes or care facilities, and they're not necessarily spending a lot of time with other people. And there is a huge loneliness gap in that situation. So uh, the act of reminiscing and storytelling is, is very good for them mentally, um, not only for recollection and avoiding things like early onset Alzheimer's, but just for overall mental health. Well, and I read a quote uh, yesterday stating that the loneliness, uh, elders, it's not about the loneliness, it's about the forgottenness, right? When they're in the retirement homes, it's how family forgets them. And, you know, sometimes it takes us losing them in order to remember them. Yes. Exactly. So I want to get into uh, the affiliate uh, affiliates and influencers and uh, sales partners. How does that work? Yeah, so we actually just launched that program in the last few weeks. So you can sign up to our site um, as an affiliate. Nothing is restricting you. There's really no vetting process as of now. Um, so if you just wanted to sell a few medallions or a few books and make some extra money on your side, that would be great. Um, so you, you'll just sign up as an affiliate or sales partner. You'll get a unique link. And when someone clicks that link and purchases, the sale gets attributed to you. And then we'll pay 20% commission on all sales. So when that just started, correct? Yeah, it's about two or three weeks old. And, and how does that work like for the influencers? 
Uh, so a lot of the recent ads are have been funeral homes for the medallions. So on their website, when they offer ancillary products that is not core to their business, like a ceremony or something like that, check this out. Um, we're a sales partner with Memorygram. They offer this great medallion. So then they would click their link and then it would take them to our site and then they would do the purchase process through us. And then uh, the sale would get tracked and then the commission payments are automatically paid to them through PayPal. And if it was just a influencer, they would, um, you've probably seen an influencer do their normal influencer thing and say, check out this medallion. It's amazing. Link in bio. And then they would, or someone would purchase through their unique link. So, and if anybody wanted to reach out to you guys, what's the best way to reach out to you guys? I'll let Paul answer that one. Uh, I guess the best way to reach out to us is uh, via email at uh, hello at memorygram.com is the best way. Um, we also have a phone number at the bottom right of our website, the 512 local Austin number mm -hmm. uh, during business hours. Yeah, you can call us 512-300-7034. So, and, and Paul, you said there's a lot of family members that have done the book. So what was the outcome of the book? Their outcome was that they had a memoir that they'd written that they really, really cherished and enjoyed and shared with a lot of family members. I think there was some surprise at how many stories and how much they had to write. I think almost all of them underestimated how much they had to write. That was probably the most common theme um, being that they thought, oh, I was going to write you know, I don't know, 100 pages, and I ended up writing 300 pages. Because once they started, once that well of memories started being tapped, it was more and more and more and more and more. And they all ended up with books that were much longer than what they thought they would be, much more rich and robust with uh, stories and memories from their lives. I think that was probably the most common theme. <laughs> Uh, we have a question here. Has anyone ever done a recipe book? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, some people we've had a, we've had a few people whose books essentially were recipe books that it was just their mom's recipes and just a bunch of pictures of what the ingredients look like and the end result and essentially making a cookbook that was a biography like. 20% biography, 80% cookbook. Um, and and they would add a little bit of flair to it of their own stories of, oh, yeah, I remember this time that we made the uh, beef stroganoff uh, at, um, I don't know, uh, Thanksgiving or it was uh, maybe Fourth of July and so-and-so fell into the lake and it was so funny and, yeah, that sort of thing. I think it's really cool because it, it has different layouts, right? So it's it's almost like a storybook, right? When you read a bedtime story, it's each book is different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so how young has your client been? Like the youngest of, that has done a book so far? Who wrote the book? Yeah. Uh, the youngest book author, I would say, was in her 20s. Oh, okay. uh, and she wrote a book about a mission trip. To she did a mission trip to somewhere in Asia, and her book was specifically about her memories from her travels and her experiences on her mission trip in Asia. It was, I I guess you could call it a memoir, but really it was just a very robust detailing of a section of her of her still pretty young life. I mean, she couldn't have been more than twenty six years old. Having, having written this book. So it's certainly not limited to people who are at the end of the road, so to say. I, I think it's nice that there's a different range of ages that write the, these books, mm -hmm. right? Because you don't have to be in your 50s and 60s to write this book, right? You can be not as young as 20. Uh, have you ever thought of reaching out to children to do this in like a school project? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Well, we've uh, we've been on like the 40 plus range so far, and then now we're in the afterlife. But uh, of the grander vision, we're going to start to work our way down the uh, the age uh, with some other products. But we haven't approached any children's yet. Um, we've had some conversations about it, Paul. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's something that I guess you could say is on our product roadmap. Right now, we're very focused on the medallions and expanding on that, on what so what the capabilities in the medallion of the, those profiles and what can be done there. That that's probably the most exciting stuff we're working on right now. And the reason that I ask that is because, you know, like in class, sometimes they ask you to write a favorite memory or a grandma's recipe or something. Mm -hmm. If a, a classroom was put together, like, you know, as as a class experiment or, uh, you know, get the children involved in the in the schools and that and put a book together and kind of reach out. I'm all about education and kids and being different. Right. So when I found you guys, I was just like. I used to tell stories and my, my cousins would say, Oh, well, how do you remember that about grandma? Like, how do you remember that about auntie and uncle? And I was just like, kid that paid attention to the elders. Um, and I think it's a, having different kids in different schools getting involved, you know, like, uh, I think it would be really cool. If it ever happens, let me know. Cause I'd be interested to see what, well, what I will, happens. I will say this, Miss Liz, Group storytelling is something that's very interesting to us, and it will not be long before our product is much more geared towards not just allowing individual stories. Yes, that will continue to be, that will always be a core of what we do, but allowing and facilitating for group projects is something that is coming quite soon, I would say. I like that. I like because you get so many different stories, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just found this uh, another amazing platform called the talking cards where they have like questions that are similar to what you guys have on your platform. And it just gets a conversation going. And I think memories bring conversation. Uh, you know, when you're at a get together and do you remember what grandma did? Do you remember what uncle did? You know, uh, do you remember that joke that I heard when we were like 20 years ago? Like, you know, the conversations. So when you and uh, Larry and Paul, when you guys talk together, do you guys have these moments where you're like, hey, do you remember 20 years ago when we thought we would do this, but we're not doing this and we should be doing this? Like when you work with someone that you grew up with, you're always talking about old stories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not just true. as learning lessons, as laughing moments. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Paul's already putting his head down. He's like, Miss Liz, don't even go. <laughs> no, no, it's funny. It's just, it's just funny. Cause like, we'll just have like inside jokes that will come up randomly that are, this is 20 years old, you know, or, or much or longer. 20 years ago, we were 20. I mean, 30 years ago, even longer. I mean, it's incredible. Incredible. Well, you look back on life, right? And you're like, oh, my goodness. I never thought I'd be here 20 years later, you know? Nope. Definitely not. Definitely not. If you told me I'd be living in Austin, Texas, doing what we're doing now, I wouldn't even know what to say. I probably wouldn't believe it. But here we are. <laughs> so I asked you guys to give me words that describe yourself. So I got the words caring and sincere. So who gave me caring? Probably Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you give me that word, Paul? Because uh, caring is cool. And oh, I, I like you know, I think uh, I was on this big kick where it seemed like being aloof and nonchalant and disassociated and detached was sort of in vogue in society and i thought no i think caring is cool being engaged is better and so i think uh i do better as a person i'm at my best and my best self when i care a lot and when i care about what i'm doing and the people i'm doing it with and the people i'm doing it for and so that's an important word for me as i you know as we sit here in 2024 caring is very important to me and Larry, I'm going to guess you gave me sincere. I would guess so as well. Um, probably from the fact that I might be a little more serious than I need to be. Likely as a result of a business at this stage requires uh, a level of sincerity. Um, I'm also, I guess, very direct in my communication often. Um, 
and I'll tell you how it is. Like I will tell you generally, genuinely how I feel about certain things and uh, probably with less of a filter than my wife would prefer. I, I like, I like straight shooters. <laughs> <laughs> so you also gave me your colors and you gave me green and white. So who's the green and who's the white? We're both green and white. We're Spartans. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah Michigan State's colors are green and white. So we always rock the green and white. And, uh, you know, we look good in green and white, I would say. Oh, I like it. I like it. I I thought maybe one of you guys was one was white, one was green. But if you're both. So is it like your favorite sport team? Is it your kind? Like why green and white? Yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. Where we, uh, went to, it was the college where we went to college and spent our college years together. Yeah. And we started our educational journey as accountants turned entrepreneurs. So um, a big uh, point in our lives that had a big impact on who we became as adults. If, if we have to pick who's green and who's white, I guess I'll be white because my motorcycle helmet is white and like, I'm riding my motorcycle today. So like I'm in a very white outfit. Um, my shoes are white. I don't green know. is my favorite color. So I will take it. There, there we go. <laughs> I like how you guys pair together. You guys make a good, you know, pairing. Uh, so what message would you have for anybody that's out there that's looking for something different? I'll start with you, Larry, and then I'll jump to you, Paul. Yeah, I mean, honestly, with Mother's Day on the horizon, um, and I, last year, last two years, when we start marketing our product, we did get a lot of negative feedback very reasonably that stop marketing Mother's Day gifts to me. My mother passed away. It's very hard on me. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, not we have the medallions. Um, so we do have a way to help someone whose mother is there and who has passed away and to honor their legacy, celebrate who they are. Um, so that's kind of my sales pitch for Mother's Day coming up. I think that this product is great for anyone, um, whether you're younger, which we just spoke about, whether you're older, there's never a bad time to start recording your life. Even at my age, I could write a book right now and I'd probably write another one when I'm 60. So, you know, your life experiences are um, a result of who you are and how you've progressed through life. So don't lose those memories. Record them and celebrate them and teach other people what you've learned from those memories. Absolutely. So and for you, Paul? Yeah, I would say, you know, just because your just because your mother may be gone doesn't mean you can't do something for her. Um, you know, I talk to my mom about my sister and she you know, and sometimes she'll do things, you know, she like put, uh, she'll do things in her memory and I'll say, why do you do that? What are you doing that for? She's like, cause it's all like, it's all that's left that I can do for her. And I said, okay, I understand you're in pain. Like, I understand that you're trying to do whatever you can. And so I'm thinking about like what we're doing. I'm like, yeah, this is something that if your mom's gone, mother's day is hard. Like, this is something you can do for that. You actually can do for your mother. You can, help honor her memory and her legacy using the memory gram medallions. Um, and I will say, I don't want to give too much away about it, but we do have some very interesting technology coming up with the medallions that will allow you to interact with your departed loved one in ways that even five years ago, no one would have even dreamed of to be possible. And that's not coming. That's that. Don't want to give too much away because it's still on the horizon. But that is something that's coming that will be available to all of our uh, new and existing customers. Well, and that's the next question I have for you guys. So, do you guys have any upcoming new layouts that you're going to be bringing to the table? I know you can't give too much away, Paul, uh, but is there something to look forward to with Memory Gram that people for might sure. not see anywhere else? For sure, for sure. So on the book side, we'll go books and then we'll go medallions. On the book side, like I said before, group storytelling is something that's very interesting to us. And in upcoming iterations of the product, group storytelling is going to be at the forefront of our new features in that product and service to allow for groups of people to tell their stories in ways that, that quite frankly, no one is doing right now that will allow different groups. And there's all sorts of groups out here. Um, clubs, fraternities, sororities, um, partnerships that people want to be able to tell the story of a time. 
a certain time in their life or a certain segment of their life or a certain thing that they were a part of. And that is something that's coming very soon uh, on the book side. Um, too, right, Paul? What's that? Community groups. Community groups. Yeah, all sorts, all sorts of groups. I mean, the sort of groups that have reached out to us for group storytelling. It's unbelievable uh, down to, oh, a group of guys that go hunting in oh. rural Oregon. And it's like a group of like 20 to 50 guys that rotated in and out of this hunting lodge. And they're writing the, their story of all the stories and all the crazy things that happened while they were out at the hunting lodge. And it's this totally informal group. It's not some formalized thing. You can't find them on the Internet. You're never going to be able to look up this group. But they have this whole history and culture and their own way of doing things and initiation, all this stuff. You would never find them. There's so many groups like that out there. Um, that want to, and you know, where their members are getting older, starting to die, and where their memories don't need to be lost, and their families, their children are super interested in learning, what did dad do when he was out at the hunting lodge every whatever winter, or whenever they were hunting, and now they are getting that. So this group storytelling is the one piece. On the medallion side, I think that what we're building is going to make this a much, much more interactive experience than anything currently happening in the memorial space anywhere. And it will be a situation where basically you will be able to interact with your the, the, essentially in some sense, in some sense, you will be able to interact with your lost loved one. And so that's the big stuff that's coming. I, I think it's really cool, you know, and I think I, I bless, bless my grandma's soul that, you know, that I just put the word in memory and I found you guys. Like, I think it's really a blessing from her on the other side. Um, I, I'm going to be looking into the medallions because uh, we're doing the bar a double burial of my father and my grandmother in May. So that's why I asked you how long they take. Uh, so I have lots of time to get that done. So um, now... On the medallion, on the QR code, uh, the code, does that bring you to the obituary page? It yeah. Brings, yeah, it brings you to their profile. So basically, if you go to, you know, medallions.memorygram.com, you check, will be check out memorygram.com, then click the medallions button. Sorry. Yeah, and click the medallion. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And, 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 so, and so if you do that, you can start building the profile Okay. Before you even buy the medallion. Mm -hmm. So you can you can start building their profile and and the QR code will go to that profile and it allows people who scan it to interact with that profile, to add yeah. a memory, to add so a photo, the, to write so a nice thought or a well wish or something like this. So the profile itself creation is free. So if you go to our, our website on memorygram.com, direct yourself to the medallions, there will be a button to create the free profile. Um, it's just uh, you can't share it um, with anyone else until the medallion is purchased, but you get full setup privileges. And then basically what happens is when you receive your medallion with a unique QR code, you'll scan it with your phone and then it will say, would you like to attach this profile with this medallion? So okay. it'll attach when you receive the medallion. So it's a pretty seamless process. I, I, I think there was a blessing from my grandmother because, you know, it, she always mentioned don't forget me. And I think the medallion is the, her saying, don't forget me, you know, because mm -hmm. they can go to the gravesite and they can actually scan it and they can have that time with grandma and, mm -hmm. and, and, and dad and that. Uh, I think it's really amazing what you guys are doing and I can't wait to see what else is going to come about. If you guys do do the thing with the school, please let me know. Cause I'm really interested in that. I always love to hear how kids interact with you know, uh, reading and learning, because there's so many different ways of reading and learning. So what mm -hmm. final message do you guys have for everybody today? Um, and how can people reach you again? We'll put that out again so we can get them over there. And uh, the cost for the books and the cost for the medallions again. Yep. Uh, so final thoughts. It's never too late to tell your story. Um, it's not that intimidating to write your story. 
a lot of people come to us and they feel like they need to write a book. I mentioned people are writing their books over 10 months, answering a question a week with a couple paragraphs. Anyone can do this. And when we have our group storytelling, a group can uh, can write an entire book with just a couple members, um, all your members submitting just one or two stories. On the medallion side, the profile setup is super easy. It's a, it's a lasting tribute. It's a celebration of legacy and it's an honor. And on the pricing, our Memorygram Legacy book right now is $109. Uh, there are no recurring fees I mentioned. So the medallion itself is $99 with no recurring fees. Uh, and you will get a book with your Legacy book purchase and a physical medallion plus the virtual memorial with your medallion purchase. Well, thank you so much, Larry, for putting it out there. Uh, Paul, do you want to just spell out the website so everybody can jump on over there and uh, check it out? We have a sure. couple of people on Instagram that are leaving comments and all of that, uh, that I can't get into this studio because it's separate districts and destinations. But no, they're, okay. they would like to know how to reach and connect with you. So uh, it's first word is check out, C-H-E-C-K-O-U-T dot memorygram that's m-e-m-o-r-y-g-r-a-m dot com check out dot memorygram dot com go there for the books go there for the medallions go there just to check out the page whatever um we would love to have you and we hope that you have us too well, I think it was a real pleasure meeting you guys. Uh, I know me and Larry, we had a couple jokes back and forth, uh, you know, through emails. I was like, is there a third person? He's like, no, it's <laughs> so, you know, there was a little bit of joking around. I really uh, enjoyed getting to know you guys and I hope we stay in contact and please keep me updated. Uh, again, if anybody would like to know more about Tea Times or Miss Liz, check Miss Liz's website at www.misslizesteatimes.com. You'll be able to see all of these podcasts there. Go under the podcast section. Uh, if you'd like to see all of the guests that have been on Tea Time, you can check out the Tea Time series. Uh, Miss Liz is five years into here, and there's over three. Did Miss Liz freeze. Oh, yeah. We, you know, we have some crazy weather over here in Canada, and you guys are in the States. We have a lot of rain right now, and then tomorrow we have snow. Like, it's just that kind of way right so I, I really want to thank you boys for joining me and uh you know stay in contact and let me know how things go for you guys uh we will be back tonight at 7 p.m eastern standard time we have macy markey joining us and she's bounced don't break and we're going to be talking about women empowerment and a lot of good things uh mental health um, overcoming and again my guest connect because she created greeting cards in order to survive for her and her, uh, she was a single mom and she survived through making greeting cards. You guys make books and medallions and she makes greeting cards. So I think it's really uh, amazing how my guests always connect and always join together in a different way. So we're gonna wrap it up and we're gonna see you guys back here at 7 p.m. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the section if you're watching the replay push hashtag replay so that miss liz knows when you're tuning in and i can give you a shout out and a thank you and a special thank you to all of my supporters and collaborators that have worked with miss liz through the five years uh, without you guys we could not do this so we're making memories and who knows maybe miss liz will write a memory gram book with all of you guys in it with a little story so you just never know where miss liz is going to go next so until then i'll see everybody at 7 p.m eastern standard time for the next tea time and we'll serve another TEA with you all tonight. Bye-bye. <laughs>